morning. While I'm washing this, you need to do this. So, pop on the kettle. Just wait for it to boil. Salted. Chuck in the tea bag. Pour in the water. Stir and squeeze the bag. Add your milk. Stir again. And there's your cup of tea done. And now you've got your cup of tea. I'll continue watching this. You watch the rest of the video. It's a very long video. It does show what I do when I'm not doing these bikes. And it does show my next upcoming video on the SR50 as well. So guys, sit back. It's a long video, but enjoy it. I was going to show you me fitting these cables and getting them round. But I'll be honest with you, it doesn't look very cool at all. And it's just an awful lot of fumbling around. What I would say is make sure you're all in the right part because there's injection, which is the later years, and the carb model, which is a single one. So make sure you get the right ones. I have got the right ones now. Um, lucky enough, I ordered the right ones. I'm slightly worried about how mangled this is, though. Um, but it's a case of only tip I can give you without showing you how boring this is is don't take both cables off leave one on and you know where it went before otherwise you're going to take both off and not know what you're doing so it's my biggest tip do one at a time which I've done but this is all knackered anyway and I'm thinking this is actually knackered um, you can see one nugget there and there's not there nugget you know little clip bit so it may slip I don't know but um, yeah, I'm not going to go over it um, obviously that came today, nothing else has come. You can see the headlights off, the ignition was really easy, which is just undoing these two bolts here, and the big bolt, and then this just literally lifts off. Turn upside down, it's just 10mm bolts. I couldn't make it any more simpler. Um, I would like to show you in depth things where it takes it, but it, it didn't, didn't need it. I'll quickly show you down here while I've got this up anyway, you see the tanks to the side. Panels off, like I said. Let's have a quick look. <clears throat> so here you go, up and down basically top one goes in there the other one rebounds pulls it shut um, I don't know why they've got two cables I really don't but they do so as I said it's injection not the carb model and there's the air filter nice and clean as I said um, this is the mess up here but you see this the headstock um, that's fine and then once that bolt comes out of there and these two bolts here this just lifts off and then it's easy to get off the ignition here is the offending item Got a new one coming. Colour the wires don't particularly matter as long as they're in the right order. As you can see they did a, I don't know what they rammed in there. But it, it didn't work. So that's gone. And the headlight, which I kept saying, I don't know if you can even see the crack. You can't, you know, it's just a small crack but it let water in so that's, that's, that's rubbish that is. Here's the actual switch they cut. So I'm going to reconnect that and I brought some heat shrink. So I'm going to reconnect them and uh, heat shrink it over to make sure it's watertight. Right, let's get on with putting this cable back on. If it doesn't work, I'll have to get a new one of these. That'd be a bugger. <laughs> and uh, keep going. Let's just check the battery. So I charged it yesterday. 12.3 volts. It's not bad. I think I'll give it another charge and see if it holds charge. Um, sometimes they can still have voltage in them, but they're not actually enough to kick over there's volts and there's the amps that the, the bike needs is 6.3 amps so i'll have to see whether it keeps the voltage anyway carry on i suppose there's a lot of things you don't see um that you do on bikes you know the little bits that i often forget that i just do um when this was damaged it's too far bent forward so bending it back a bit and it is crap there I know on a glue gun net but it does mean that now this will fit and be snug down where it was it was up before if you know what I mean so now it's jammed down and I often think should I evolve that or add it even into the video and you know it just takes up time when I think you're bored and it's trying to keep a uh, 
you uh, guys happy. Um, right, you may notice tank is back down and the throttle cable now works perfectly. Um, it was damaged. What I did is I drilled above and underneath where the um, nipple is on the cable and then I bent one of them around it and clamped it in. Now it's nice and tight. Let me show you that working. An MOT failure. If that doesn't flick back, MOT failure. Can you see that? I don't really know why it's got to a turn. If I'm really honest, someone's going to tell me. When I didn't connect it, it worked perfectly. So, anyway, that is perfect. So the tank can come back down again, which it is now. Air box is back on. Um, she needs a good polish and clean, but hey, I'm not going to even think of doing that. Uh, I will give it an oil change. That is desperately done. The um, plug's back in there. And again, I don't know whether... When you accelerate and decelerate, you know, uh, it, well, that's good enough for me. Whether it cat In MOT, if you accelerate and shut the throttle, and if you turn left and right, and the revs go up and down, that's an MOT failure. It's catching somewhere. But the tank's on better. Uh, I can put the rear seat on now as well. I am just waiting realistically for ignition. Um, once I get ignition, you know, I'll know if it works. I did think about maybe trying to get this to come on, but I'm not too tempted about that now. Um, as I said, I'm just doing the clocks now. I'm going to glue that um, and then put this cover back on. I'm going to clean it all up. See the um, broken bits? Um, okay, confession time. Bought the wrong parts. No stop setting. Different front, different fascia. And. Backs are completely bloody different. It said, 10 plate, one of these. Now, remember I said this is the Mark II injection? It's a change over here. Why well, I'd always get that. <sighs> no good. And that's annoying, that's 24 pounds. So I'm gonna clean these up, petrol the uh, glue. It looks like this wasn't done in the fifth, you know. There was a small screwing top and the sellotape around here. So I think someone else did this. That makes me worry that maybe a bulb's gone. So I don't want to glue it back, realistically. So I've got it ready. I'll um, glue all these back on there, put proper screws in there, and glue that back down. That should go nicely. But before I... Dog yawning. Before I do that, I want to make sure it works. So this is on hold for the time being, but that will fit. Look at that. That, fit. <laughs> that fits so much better now. Nice clocks, actually, really. Anyway, there we go. That will fit. Ignition, right, a bit later on we'll get on with it. Headlights still got to come and the panels. So that'll be tomorrow or Monday. Anyway, let's go with it. So, as impatient as I am, <laughs> I've just put all the wires back in. Um, as you can see, this is a starter. I'm going to heat seal that. Let's get a closer picture of that. I've got to take them up and obviously heat seal them. It's a bit of a mess in there. But this is the bottom of ignition, okay? Nice and easy. Now, in theory, if I connect the little connector to that, which is this bit here, we should get power. Possibly even a start, I don't know. Indicators are back on now, front and back. Yeah, coming along, isn't it? Here's the bottom of the lock. I was going to try and trap it through, but I just ripped the bottom off. Um, it's no good, I'm getting a new one. Let's see if she starts. This cross. Uh, if I just take this off, it will stop. <laughs> I had a panic then where it would keep running. What if it started at all? Here's the biggie. Right, got the connector there. Um, push that that way, and then in theory, turn on. <laughs> That's the fuel injection noise. That gear. Yeah, it's that gear. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Come on! <laughs> and there it goes off. Oh yes, I am happy. That is the result. All I've got to do now is wait for the ignition, which hopefully will come uh, tomorrow. And I can refit ignition. Oh, I'm going to check with the clocks and all the lights working there. And if that's good, I'm going to put that back on now. 
Oh, it doesn't matter. I've got to put this on anyway. So let's let's not get ahead of myself. Um, well, that's brilliant news. And I've got the headlight to connect and everything else. Right, let's get on with it. Happy. Someone asked me what to do all day. Well, I'm always doing something. Bikes always seem to need a little bit of work on. So, what am I working on now? Well, on at home last night. Had a little bit of grinding. Not much on there. So, you ones ready? Always use copper grease. Brilliant stuff. It's so simple to do. A few tools. Any bike is just a few tools. These are 12 mil on the top, 8 mil for the top bit. Hadn't done this before. There's a little clip on top. It was a little gudgeon pin, and I had no idea that it had two tiny little clips. It was just a case of just looking, you know, took it off, pushed it round, pushed a screwdriver through, and out they popped. Come on, darling, how are you? Oh, jeez. I'm always in something, you know me. Get the light out of me. <laughs> I've got two packets for you in the yeah, van. No, I'm waiting for them. One's back. admission, hopefully. Get the hell out of the potion there. <laughs> Nice and clean, WD-40 around these two little bits here, um, leave them soak, and then you have to have a rewind tool. These are brilliant, um, not a lot of money, saving an awful lot of time with two screwdrivers. They don't do the pads so well, but any bigger bikes they're brilliant for. The new ones ready to go on, spray WD-40 all these little bits up here, then put a bit of copper grease on them clean these bits here can you see these bits here they're the runners up and down clean them as best you can bit of copper grease on there as well whack them back on and uh done one side already i'll do the rear and there's my brakes done and that is the rear done nice and clean have a look at how bad they were now i'll be honest with you i'm a rear breaker but what's this about? I have packages. <laughs> I reckon I'm praying that's ignition. Let's get back in my shed and have a look. Right, top tip, and I've said it before, always put your tools away once you've done any job. Stops you looking around everywhere for the bloody tools. It bugs the hell out of me, and I keep doing it, you know. I do like that light. Just put them back where they're supposed to be because you always know where to search for them afterwards. Anyway, what came in the post? Right, these are really handy as well actually. Stop, because obviously I'm not always in my shed. Old knees. Obviously I'm not always in my shed. Um, battery is on charge. That did really, really well last night. If I plug it in, there we go. Um, I charged it up. When I first got it, three days ago, it is pumping in there still this morning, 12.31 volts. Doesn't mean the amps are there though. I've always said that. Just because they're there doesn't mean that it will kick over the bike. I've had lots of little batteries that still say 12 volt. You put them on the bike, goes yeah, yeah. It's the amps that kicks over. All right. Anyway, this, as I said to you, is a great tool. It's from Draper, um, eBay, wherever you are. Any country has eBay, doesn't it? So again, when you finish with it, clean it up, put it back the way you found it. That's my top tip for today. I always say I'll give some top tip, don't I? Now why do I say over and over again about it? Well, because I spent years flapping around in my garage, shed, wherever I was, never been able to get the right part. I tell you also is a good part to have, a spindle key. I know, you know, you may only use it once, but for me, because I do so many diverse little things, I've uh, always used them. Now I am getting some better tool cabinets. Well, not so much better, I'm placing them out a little better, so in there is four hammers rather than the mess you used to have. What came in the post? Well, my ignition, new petrol cap, and ignition. I'm showing you how I'll get that on in a minute. But, Da da, heat gun and sleeves. I'm going to do a separate video on that. I've always wanted to have a heat gun and sleeving. Um, it's for these two wires here. 
Now I'm going to connect them and I'm going to put a sleeve over it and heat the sleeve over it. So I'll do a separate video of that. That'd be quite cool. This comes up again. Ooh, shiny. One ignition. Uh, do you know, for a second I thought it wasn't the same, but it is. Brilliant, right. Let's get on with putting this on. Um, um, yeah, you know what I mean. It's just going to be lift up and popping it on there. Wait for a separate video of me doing heat sealing and uh, sleeving even. And then next, all I'm waiting for now is the headlight and the side panels. Isn't it funny? I paid the most for these two parts, three parts even, and they, haven't been, they ain't here. The boring parts. I may just bend it forward. Easy enough. I have to say, I wasn't going to go there, um, but I thought I'd better show you. First off, the bulb that came in the cheap headlight was the old style, 35 watt, and not the new style halogen. So I had to cut all around here to be able to get the halogen lighting. So that was fair enough. I thought I'll leave that one, you know. And then, obviously this is black and that one's chrome, but it's just really quite inferior. Um, products they send you from China. I mean, twenty-five pound. I think the headlight unit cost me, and it's a pattern part, but it's just not the same. But the, I was going to leave this black one on there, but to cut, you know, not cut. I disconnect all the wires and try and come back in here because they wouldn't go back in here. Um, but it's been an absolute nightmare trying to get all these cables apart and then fit this one back in here, um, and then reconnect all them and then get that headlight back in there with all these wires. It's an absolute fucking nightmare. Um, I don't even think this is as deep. No, it's not even as deep. Uh, so at present minute, yeah, I'm a bit stuck. Um, I mean, I'll get on with it, but you can see that they didn't line up. I mean, I could have just drilled through these, I guess, and then marked them up that way. But I thought, no, while well, I've got the chrome one, I'll give it a go. But not all things work. And I guess what I'm trying to say is pattern parts just be ready that they're not going to be exact plug and play this is why i blew the coil in the first place which i'm still waiting for um because the ignition which is here um the wires were different and i noticed them and i thought nah, it'd be fine it's you know it says it's for this bike they're not they're generic and you may blow things so double check before you buy the parts and if you do buy the parts then expect that you may have to have a little wiggling and wangling around and a little bit of um not necessarily as it should be. He asked, why am I in the shed when clearly it's dark outside? This is why. Can any of you see 11th of the 3rd? Today's the 15th. The seller, and this is what I say about eBay. I bought the throttle cable from this guy next day, first class, like it said. This said, first class Royal Mail. Next day, that should have been. So I'm expecting it Tuesday, because I ordered it on Saturday. Wednesday gets by, seller gets stroppy with me, saying don't message me again. He's the one that paid for the cheapest possible courier at the cheapest possible price, which was four days. Do you know? Now, when I put ignition in, I blew, hopefully this, well not hopefully, but I blew it. My brain said, order Saturday, get it Tuesday, it's not the call, CDI unit, order that, Thursday, job done, MOT tomorrow. But now, because of this prick, I mean, I can't blame Hermes as the delivery driver himself, because that was in a local depot this morning, and he was here in six hours, that's great. But it just didn't get picked up for two days. Now, I've emailed him asking him why, and I'm guessing, because this code here means he paid the cheapest possible. Not 24 hour, not 40 hour. I'm ranting because it's bloody annoying. Just for this poxy thing here. Why don't I buy new? Do you know? Probably a couple of quid extra. I don't bloody know. Anyway, let's get on and fit it and see if the damn thing starts now. And if it don't, then I'm, I'm buggered. I've got to buy a CDI unit. They're 20 odd quid. And hey, you know, I'll look again for one that says, you know, I'll email them before and say, do you actually post these damn things? Why is it all apart again? Well, I'll be honest with you, it's been driving me mad for an hour. 
here's the old ignition and there's the two points there's the wires when it plugs in and you touch them two make contact and them two make contact the bike starts lovely every time I put the other one in after it blew it wasn't doing it so I took it apart and there's the problem this when turned on remember it's the other way is not making contact I mean it's just wrong so that sits there when it's off it's on and when it's on it's off these two wires did make contact when I turned it on not the way around it is now so I can't put this barrel back on what I can do though is maybe get this to wire at the back of it but of it because in theory if I can get that now to turn the switch on this thing would turn there and then would start it means you're wiring the whole thing I'll cut it it's the only thing I can think of doing and clamping it in looks like the clamp spaces are the same spaces I've got to give it a go haven't I very dark outside very late still cold this is not what I expected to have to do the bloody ignition it wasn't the coil which was all the messing around it turned out to be this and this clearly when that was on the little bit here was off I, mean, I don't know what this is to but it really wasn't right at all hence these two black wires under there weren't touching they needed to be touching where are we now? let's see this one's not to my liking it's a little bit wibbly wobbly but so it ticks over revs up and it turns off and turns on again so what a job eh I'm gonna wash it in the morning and I'll do a good view around it and this bloody thing's done realistically though I'm gonna have to get another ignition barrel for this bike just goes to it um, the ignition, the headlight, not all quite right and it caused so many problems you wouldn't have thought just these two little bits here not connecting properly would have caused all that hassle it would drive me mad I connected the old one and it worked Connect this one it wouldn't, I crossed the wires, I kept messing up with these I just, you know, couldn't get it in the end I took the bottom off and changed it over the thumbs up and time for me still cold it's actually really cold this weekend time for me to get to bed Hope you enjoyed that. I did say it was long. Let's look around the bike quickly now. A lot of work. She needs a little bit of polishing now. But at least you can see it's all back to where it should be. Nice new side panels. It still starts to look good. I'm yet to uh, give a bit of polish. There's a few little marks on her. But uh, yeah, not bad at all. I'm going to miss the lead with the wheel. But these are great commuting bikes. They'll get you back and forth to work. Wherever you need to go, college, whatever. Nice gears on these. Instrument panels nice and easy. Blessed fuel gauge, rev counter, speedo, turning, neutral. This is an injection, so you get this light here, which is an engine, high beam and indicators. And you just have the rev and go bit here, front brake, start. And over here you get your clutch, high beam, low beam, indicators and horn. This is Yamaha's YBR125. So guys, thanks for watching, liking, subscribing, keep doing that, I'll keep making them. And my next up and come video will actually be... We're going to be looking next at a 50cc Aprilia SR. Traded with me for the uh, speed fights I had. Um, very bright young lad, um, knows a lot, a good trader and knows a lot about piston slap. Always good to learn something new. Um, 
I was thought Piston Slack on two T's wouldn't let the bike run, but he assured me it did. And um, he sold me this quality bike here. So what's all this quality bike that he sells? Um, the headstock's completely shot. Funny thing, oh, panels are good, um, is they put the oil under here, which people often forgot about. I love cable ties. More cable ties, splits, nicely fitting panels. Blessed more cable ties, more splits, cable ties, more cable ties, scratches. Nice when you uh, can always lock the seat down. I mean, these do jam up, all these coming off. Well, cover anyway. Pretty good condition tyre, not. Definitely needs changing. Always horrible, they all snap, but I'd put a bolt through there. So I guess as quality bikes go, this isn't one of them. This would take many, many hours. And it also didn't even come with a V5, which is also, oh, these are split as well. This would take many hours of work. As I said in my video, it's not even worth doing anything to this until they find out it's been stolen or not. I tend not to, you know, do bikes that's got no lock books in them. You just can't tell. The seat means bugger all. But so I'll put on the cover, I'll pay £30, well it's 20 odd pound, but you have to get postal order or check if people don't often have. And I will send it away. And if I get logbook back, I'll start on it. If I don't, I'll just get taken away. So, yeah, thanks for that. Let's get back on with the uh, YBR and let's see this running now. Tire machine. I just bought this. I'm getting fed up paying £15 each time I want to change a tyre. I thought I'd have a go at it myself. So, uh, yeah, I told people at work it was a tyre machine and they said, Time machine? Where would you get one from for a start? Tyre changing machine is much better. Just black the area, I think it looks better now. Blacked here. And of course that one. I think that makes it look a lot better. Bit of a chrome and exhaust as well. There are marks around the uh, casings and so on. You can't get rid of them. But there you go. Looking better. That was a long, long video. All the tools are away. My tyre machine with tyres is down there ready for the next video along with the sr50 aprilia danny and remy from the usa i promise some shout outs and there you go i do get a few I've got to keep them in here but realistically thank you so much for subscribing liking and sharing and i'll keep making them sort of a long long video boring in places but sometimes when you do these motorbikes they are it's not all fun and this was a bit of a nightmare. However, now, good as gold, past the MOT, fuel advisories, a little bit of bent handlebars. This one where they dropped it, I reckon. Um, other than that, it passed with flying colours. I'm happy. Job done, as they say. Round the outside. Well done. Yeah, that wasn't any sense, was it? That was a long video, guys. Thanks for bearing with me. Couple of shout-outs to Danny. So, guys, like, subscribe, share. I keep fucking saying it. Guys, oh, what do I say, guys, for?